Ripple has some big new announcements in the NFT space, including a new release to support advanced NFT functionality and Michael Jordan NFTs coming to the XRP ledger. Invert and Ripple announce a partnership on carbon credit investments. The FDIC is coming after financial institutions that want to take any kind of investment in crypto. And Empower Oversight has provided some updates on what's going on as they try and shed some light on the conflicts of interest at the SEC. But if we haven't met before, my name is Frank Cho. I'm here to help you live a richer life. On this channel, we talk about cryptocurrency, personal finance, and investing. If you haven't hit that subscribe button, do it now. That way I can keep you informed of all the latest news and updates. Let's take a quick look at the crypto market before we dive in. We finally have a green day up about 2% on the day back to 2.03 trillion with Bitcoin almost back to the 44K mark. Ethereum a hair under 3,300. XRP back to the 7 spot at a whopping 78 cents still holding pretty consistent there uh you can see on the day less than a percent change solana is up five percent on the day which has helped it to get that six spot cardano recovered some luna falling down to the nine spot and you can see that avalanche is having a very nice day up seven percent separating it further from dot which is still uh, struggling to find its way back into the top 10 cryptos now let's talk nfts ripple has announced a new release to support advanced nft functionality so in this announcement this is uh release version 1.9 of Rippled, and it introduces a new amendment to the Ledger protocol to support NFT functions on the XRP Ledger per the XLS20 draft standard. So David Schwartz at Joel Katz um, sent this out earlier about what's happening uh, with Ripple devs. This is just a retweet from uh, Ripple X, but this is now up for uh, voting per the amendment process. You can see a little bit more on the announcement here. This uh, has more than 80% support from trusted validators. So Ripple validators will now uh, veto bringing XLS20 to the mainnet until they're confident in the impact of NFTs on the XRP ledger per Schwartz. Uh, in the meantime, we're conducting performance testing and plan to share our results with the broader community. Now, there's a quick quote here uh, from this full publication, which I will link down below. But uh, what we've got here is a major partnership. So Rare Air Media, the company behind Michael Jordan's graphic autobiography for the love of the game, is getting into NFTs. The company is collaborating with VSA Partners, Ripple's creator, uh, creator Fund's primary creative agency partner, to launch NFTs on the XRPL. And they're expected to be available in Q2 of this year. So we're already in Q2 now that we're in April. So sometime in the next couple of months, we should be able to see one of a kind digital assets dedicated to former player Michael Jordan, his life and career. And there'll be an intimate collection with original photos of Michael Jordan, as well as his thoughts and observations leading up to the photo. So from celebrities like Snoop Dogg to Paris Hilton to athletes like LeBron James and Tom Brady, major brands like Disney, uh, media and entertainment have been making big moves in the NFT space. And I'll link in the video description, again, this uh, for the love of NFTs is the article from Ripple just talking a little bit more about this, uh, saying that, hey, uh, media and entertainment is a, taking big strides in the NFT space. Uh, the XRP Ledger is a great spot to do this because of the speed, low cost, sustainability, and simplicity, and the opportunities for creators there to tokenize digital uh, collectibles on the XRP ledger. So really exciting times, especially seeing such a big name on the XRP ledger. Now, Invert and Ripple have announced a partnership to collaborate on carbon credit investments. So, Invert is a specialized emissions reduction and carbon offsetting company, and Ripple, who we of course know as a provider of enterprise crypto and blockchain solutions, are announcing a partnership to collaborate in the sourcing of an investment in carbon credit generation projects for early stage investment. 
Ripple and Invert are aligned in their goals to support carbon reduction and removal projects to help fight climate change. And by working together, they feel that they can make an impact and they're going to vet and accelerate capital deployment to build a, a broader portfolio of credit generation projects. Invert invests in projects that result in high quality, meaningful carbon credits being created, such as planting a forest or building a machine that removes CO2 from the air. The company has assembled a world-class team of experts across forestry, blue carbon, biocar, and other projects of carbon project development, and other areas of carbon project development, and has a large pipeline of project opportunities that can contribute towards the reduction of CO2 in the atmosphere. Ripple is committed to leading positive work in the crypto space for climate and the blockchain space. The partnership is the company's latest initiative to help build a carbon neutral future through reducing emissions, purchasing clean energy, and investing in carbon removal projects such as reforestation and carbon sequestration. Ripple has made a commitment to be carbon net zero by 2030 or sooner. They already have existing partnerships with the Crypto Climate Accord, Rocky Mountain Institute, and more to help the industry achieve wide sustainability. It's a win-win for Invert, Ripple, and the world. And the more collaboration that can be brought to investing in projects that remove or reduce greenhouse gas emissions, the more rapidly solutions to fight climate change will come to fruition. We're, uh, we're happy to work with Ripple, said their chairman, and look forward to building a strong relationship over the years to come. On the Ripple side, they said Ripple is committed to bringing industry stakeholders together to contribute ideas, technical innovations, policy ideas, and new financing for innovations to help meet the global climate goals. So this is exciting. We've talked about tokenizing things like carbon credits. Now, we know there are stricter requirements coming into place over the coming years for businesses. And so by having the ability to easily access and purchase carbon credits, they are able to meet those standards without having to go through the process of building out a rainforest into cells or trying to you know do these other efforts and activities that they as a business can't do. So they can meet the requirements without having to go through that specialized type of work. When you think of a company like um, I worked for General Motors, in finance uh, several years ago and that was always at the forefront is meeting fuel economy and co2 requirements and in order to do this you have to alter your portfolio which doesn't happen overnight and as a result of the long lead times in development and the transition to electric vehicles for instance you have to be able to purchase these offsets and so having a mechanism to do this is really beneficial and there's a lot of businesses especially in the manufacturing space that can take take advantage of this. And so Ripple, uh, seeing this as being an opportunity is really bullish for me uh, because it provides another mechanism to interact with business. And these large businesses provide an opportunity and it's a great foot in the door, especially when you're trying to proliferate the company, Ripple that is, and increase the utilization of their other products like RippleNet, which utilizes, you know, XRP. Now, the FDIC, the Federal Deposit Insurance Corporation here in the U.S., insures your banking deposits up to $250,000 per account, I believe is the threshold. Uh, but they are now coming to the banks and saying, you need to let us know when you're going to take uh, activity or take or participate in crypto related projects or other activities. Obviously, this is an insurance corporation uh, owned by the, the uh, US government to provide safety in the event of a bank run or default or bankruptcy of a banking institution. But this is, in their view, changing the risk profile of these banks. If they invest in cryptos versus some of the safer assets, in their opinion, uh, this will change the risk profile. They need to understand better what that will do as far as their calculations. And I'm sure there are a lot of people at this institution trying to crunch 
the numbers and figure out how to make this work. These actuaries are trying to, you know, take what has always been done in the past and now take a more volatile asset and build that into a portfolio. So I certainly don't envy them the math that that would require. But this is the note. Uh, I will just summarize it here. It's not too lengthy, but basically all FDIC supervised institutions that intend to engage in or that are currently engaged in any activities involving or related to crypto assets, also referred to as digital assets, should notify the FDIC. FDIC supervised institutions are requested to provide information described in this letter. The FDIC will review the information and provide relevant supervisory feedback. While the FDIC supports innovations that are safe and sound in compliance with laws and regulations and fair to customers, the FDIC is concerned that crypto assets and crypto-related activities are rapidly evolving and risks in this area are not well understood given the limited experience with these new activities. Crypto-related activities may pose significant safety and soundness risks as well as financial stability concerns. Crypto-related activities present risks to consumers and insured depository institutions face risks in effectively managing the application of consumer protection laws and regulations to new and changing crypto-related activities. An FDIC-insured institution that engages or intends to engage in any crypto-related activity should notify the FDIC and provide any information requested by the FDIC that will allow the agency to assess the safety and soundness, consumer protection, and financial stability implications of such activities. The FDIC will review the relevant information submitted related to crypto-related activities and provide relevant supervisory feedback to the institution as appropriate. So, they are calling for any current activity or any intended activity and say that they too will provide their feedback on what they think these institutions should be doing. Now, the question is, will their feedback result in a removal of the protections that the bank gets from having FDIC insurance? That is a serious question we need to understand more of, but this is just at the outset, so there'll be much more to come. I'll continue to report on this one. It's a big one because uh, if you're looking at where you're keeping your money and you want to make sure it's protected and insured, well, if they say a certain threshold of crypto investment at a banking institution will now prohibit you from being a beneficiary of FDIC insurance, that would have a significant impact. And we need to know what that's going to look like going forward as you try to make sure that your money is secure and insured. And finally here, Empower Oversight has obtained additional documents shedding light on potential conflicts of interest within the F, uh, SEC. This has been going on for quite some time since the end of last summer, and we've been waiting to see what the final outcomes would be with these conflicts with Clayton, Hinman, and Berger. And now we've got an update here from Empower Oversight. It's a quick one. It's only a couple paragraphs. I'll just read through it uh, from their press release. Word for word just came out this morning, April the 8th, 2022. So, Empower Oversight received just under 200 pages of emails from the SEC responsive to its FOIA, that's Freedom of Information Act, request for records that could shed light on allegations of conflicts of interest associated with the SEC's selective enforcement actions involving cryptos. This comes on the heels of over a thousand pages of documents that the SEC released to Empower Oversight in February. We looked at that back in February. If you remember, a lot of that information was not so helpful. It was poorly formatted. You had blank pages, pages that were skewed to a single column of one or two characters. And so it wasn't quite as good as what you were hoping for. There was some good stuff in there, but a lot of it was blank or poorly formatted, hard to read, hard to decipher. So among other things, the documents show that the SEC Ethics Office cautioned former SEC official Bill Hinman that he had a direct financial interest in Simpson Thatcher and thus must recuse himself from any matters that would affect the firm. Additionally, the ethics office explicitly told Hinman, per the documents, to not be in any contact with Simpson Thatcher for any reason. However, Hinman met with Josh Bonney, a partner at Simpson Thatcher, at least 
three times. After that warning, he also met with the co-founders and investors in Ethereum ahead of a market-moving speech he gave in 2018, that infamous Hinman speech cited multiple times in the Ripple lawsuit, declaring the digital asset Ether to not be a security despite Simpson Thatcher's participation in the Enterprise Ethereum Alliance, which is dedicated to promoting the commercial use of Ethereum. This raises questions as to whether Hinman fully disclosed Simpson Thatcher's role in Ethereum from F uh, SEC ethics officials and whether they would have approved the meetings or his speech if he had. And that right there might be the reason why the SEC doesn't want the emails coming out because of those 63 emails, if one of them even included the ethics office saying that maybe you shouldn't be giving this speech because of your ties with Simpson Thatcher, that could be the smoking gun that the SEC doesn't want to come out. Now, that's purely hypothesis, but if you kind of follow the breadcrumbs, it certainly seems like that's a possibility with all the back and forth within the agency. And we're seeing now more clearly what's happening where Hinman was having back and forth with interagency partners, but even here in these disclosures that we're seeing in the FOIA request here, there were ethics concerns. Now let's continue. The latest documents provided by the SEC raise more questions than they answer. We will continue to press the SEC for more meaningful and more timely transparency on this issue per Jason Foster, the president of Empower Oversight. Among the new documents released are an April 28, 2017 email containing, quote, initial guidance from the Office of Government Ethics that receiving retirement benefits calculated based on the profits Simf Simpson Thatcher would mean that Hinman could not participate in any SEC particular matters that would directly benefit the firm because the future interest is enough to give you a full financial interest in the firm. So his comp was tied to the performance of Simpson Thatcher. If Ethereum does well, Simpson Thatcher does well, Hinman does well. There, there's a, not to, <laughs> to put a pun in here, a ripple effect uh, all the way through in that, um, you know, if he says something that benefits Ethereum, it benefits the firm where he's getting compensated from down the line. So this is why the Ethics Council, which is correct here, they're saying the right thing, you can't be involved here. This is ethically questionable. And this email dating all the way back to April of 2017 highlights that. Also, a January 24th, no, still months ahead of his speech, January 24th, 2018 email reiterated the point to Hinman, it occurs to us that you have a full financial conflict with your old firm, not just an impartiality one. Hence, you should not be having any meetings with your old firm, even group meetings. Empower Oversight filed their initial request with the SEC pertaining to potential conf uh, crypto conflicts of interest all the way back in August of last year. Since then, they had an appeal on the SEC's denial, which they won because the SEC said, oh, we can't find these documents, but they weren't using the right search parameters. They did win that after months of a lack of response from the SEC. They filed a lawsuit against them in December to compel the release of responsive documents. A month later, Empower submitted another FOIA request with the SEC after the agency uh, spaciously claimed that there were no records responsive to some of the items in the original request. Last month, the SEC released over a thousand pages. Many were either blank or contained duplicated information. And Jason Foster, the president of Empower, published a Substack piece detailing why we need more transparency in the crypto realm. And there's a link here for you to be able to contact them if you have any information. I'll link this down in the video description. So for today, a lot to digest. Very positive things on the Ripple company side. When you have the NFTs coming to the XRP ledger, updates to the ledger itself and functionality. Michael Jordan, you've got the partnership on carbon credit. It's good things there. The FDIC, that, I, whether you like it or not, it's probably necessary because anybody in the insurance industry, when there's a change to risk, you have to reassess. Uh, insurance is there to mitigate risk. A change to the risk profile requires that. I get it. You, we might not be big fans of it, but it kind of has to happen uh, because they have to adjust what they're going to do and how they'll behave to accommodate for the change in risk. And then finally here with Empower Oversight, we knew 
that there were shady things happening at the SEC. This goes to show that Hinman specifically was called out. He was told by the ethics office to not be involved. He went ahead and took those meetings, which are fully documented in the emails, at least three as per this uh, publication. And you can see that since his comp was tied to their performance, was tied to Ethereum, it definitely raises more questions than it answers as noted here in their publication. So I hope you found this information to be helpful. If you did, consider supporting the channel by checking out some of the links in the video description. Uh, Nano S Plus is now out from Ledger and offers some more functionality uh, versus the previous Nano S and a pretty good value compared to the X. So check it out in the video description if you're interested in keeping your crypto secure in cold storage. Hit a like if you found any value here in this video and don't forget to hit that subscribe button so I can keep you up to date on all the latest news. We'll be following all these stories as many of them will have some threads that will continue to pull on, especially the conflicts of interest at the SEC. Thank you so much for spending some of your time here with me. I do truly appreciate it. I hope you have a fantastic rest of your day and start to the weekend and i will see you in the next one